Okay. Uh, well, as a kid, I lived off of West Mound Street, and we used to walk to the Central Point Shopping Center. Um, and a friend, my friend and I, Ida, and we used to ca count how many people were whistling at us and, uh, you know, compare the whistles. Uh, and sometimes we would go over to Green Lawn Cemetery. Green Lawn was a little scary. It was very, very quiet there. And uh, uh, if you walked far enough into Green Lawn, there was a pond. And I remember they used to have a sign that said, don't abuse the ducks. And I always worried about, you know, duck abusers being in the cemetery. But uh, I had an interest in that cemetery, and I joined a group here in Columbus called Ghosts of Ohio, and really wasn't so interested in ghost hunting as I was in the history of Columbus. And um, my major contribution, I guess, to Ghosts of Ohio is to encourage them to work with Green Lawn Cemetery. Green Lawn um, doesn't have a lot of money for uh, maintenance. Uh, at this uh, time, they don't even have a wood chipper. They, they lost a lot of the, the maintenance funds, I think, in the Depression, and they asked for volunteers to come out. Um, the guy that runs Ghosts of Ohio was given the choice of a number of sections that we could do, and he decided, we, we voted actually, to do Section 50, which is where James Thurber is buried. Also, Emil Ambos, the fisherman, is there. Um, we do, a, we clean up a lot of old dead limbs. Uh, this is also by the pond, and uh, so we see the bird watchers. Uh, my friend that's in Ghosts of Ohio enjoyed her work in Green Lawn so much that she ended up working part-time at Green Lawn. And both of us are always got our eye out for anybody visiting Section 50, Section 50 that may know uh, the people who are buried there. We have met uh, relatives of Thurber that way. Uh, Thurber's got his whole family there. His, his uh, grandfather was a greengrocer, and, and I think his grandfather must have bought, bought the plot. There are many, many people related to Thurber in that area. Um, we also met a guy, an old man, an old woman. They looked like they could barely totter into the office there, and he was there to see his mother, and he was telling her name, and my friend was looking up where his mother was buried. Well, it turned out to be in Section 50, and um, she, he was telling us about a big house that she had on Hague Avenue with lots of flowers. And I was just trying to get any stories out of him that I could about this woman whose grave we have charge of. And I said, well, how many children does your mother have? And he said, well, she didn't have any children. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> so my friend Julie and I, we just kind of looked at each other. Um, Julie goes and pulls a lot of the the internment cards up. We just keep trying to find stories about these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've also uh, went to school as a, I graduated from Ohio State as a biology teacher. And one of my professors there, I was very interested in botany, and one of my professors there was Ronald Stuckey. And Ronald uh, has taken people on tours of that cemetery uh, because of the botanical things. There's many birds and botanical things that don't grow any other place in the state. Mm. Um, I know the Sullivans who helped found Columbus, they have a, a plant that is named after them. I believe uh, Sullivantii can be found in the cemetery. Just a really cool place. Mm. 